Institute of Education. I am grateful to have each and every one of you here for the workshop on the topic Digital Initiatives in Education being organized by IQAC as a part of celebrating India's presidency of G20. Digital education in India is an innovative and major leap towards enhanced learning, structural development, and acquiring knowledge using digital services and technology. With this, I would like to invite Dr. Bilasha Gautam, Principal AIE, for welcome address. Thank you. Thank you, Latesh. Thank you for a good start of the event after five minutes of the delay again. A very good afternoon to one and all present here on this virtual platform. Uh, as Latesh has just mentioned that India has taken a lot of digital initiatives. I must say that uh, in the past uh, one decade, India has taken a long leap in terms of making India Indian education digitized, digitalized. And India, as we all know, is a very well progressing towards digital education, backed by rising adoption, or adoption of digitization by the universities and colleges and at the all levels of education system. Uh, Indian government has launched the Digital India Initiative in July 2015 to strengthen the digital online infrastructure and expand internet connectivity among citizens. Uh, at in, in all the corners of, of our nation. So as part of Digital India Initiative, the government also started e-education initiatives. And these e-education initiatives have taken a long jump in uh, during COVID-19. And this is the result of these all initiatives that we have, that India has taken uh, in this area, that we were able to cope up with that shift of education system from traditional offline system to the online system uh, without uh, much of the pains and we were have been we, we have been very much successful in converting our education to the online education system uh, without any failure so these initiatives uh, were taken by india to provide online education in remote areas in urban areas uh, using smartphones, using mobiles, using app, apps and internet services. And in, the, in this progress, Indian government has taken several uh, initiatives, for example, PME Vidya program, Diksha, and uh, a lot of platforms are there. Now NCRT books are there in the digital format. There are virtual labs wherein students can explore, wherein teachers can use those virtual labs. So these E -dig uh, these digital initiatives in the field of education are actually focusing on making India more progressive. And this is a call for all the teachers, for all the teachers there in the service and for all those who are in the pre-service teacher training program to be well acquainted with all these cha changes in education system and to know more about it and to make it more successful by using it, adopting these changes, these digital initiatives, by understanding this, and by incorporating all these changes in our education system. So for this, we have our very uh, learned, experienced resource person today with us, Dr. Deepti Gupta. She is, uh, she is the person who has been there uh, behind Many of these initiatives, she was in the team, working team in NCRT. We are very fortunate to have you here, ma'am, and a hearty welcome to you. I wish you could have been here with us in the offline mode, but someday definitely you will be there. Uh, so welcome you, ma'am. Without taking much of the time further, I again, uh, a hearty welcome to you. And I hope this session will be a very insightful session for all those who are attending it and welcome to all the participants uh, from the college and from outside the college who have joined us in th in this online mode today thank you every uh, everyone and over to you deepthi ma'am thank you dr vilasha for inviting me for the session 
and to the team and all the participants who are attending this session i hope in this session will be something you will learn uh, more about the initiatives some of the brief introduction uh, dr bilasha has told about many initiatives so i will focus on the initiatives in the detail and i will also like to introduce some uh, tools or the some softwares which will make you as a teacher future teacher much benefit in the uh, like for creating the content or uh, development of e content and you will definitely use those tools in future you might be using in uh, right now too so uh, thank you again and uh, i will just continue the session okay am i audible and everything is technical and is okay fine okay thank you so uh, before starting the session uh, first of all i would like to ask the participant and all of you like which technology you are most using nowadays like what is the technological device you have in your hand and how in what way you are using it so it will be like some of the responses in a chat box if you can uh, tell yes uh, yes ma'am mobile smartphone and then so smartphone is the most useful device which we all have having in our hands and what you can do from that mobile phone uh, especially you can uh, your laptops too and mobile uh, laptop is not at every time in your hand but the mobile device is in your hand every time and you cannot spend even a one hour gap for, uh, from your mobile phone so if we talk about like uh, what kind of activities you can do from your mobile phone you just take an example you just click out the pictures you create a e content image is a e content photograph is a e content when you click a photograph you are creating a video you are creating the e content you are storing that e content in your mobile phones that storing is a part of uh, after development you are creating you are saving it storing it in your mobile phone if you want to share that content to someone else through whatsapp or telegram or any email you can share the e content and if you want to retrieve that content somewhere if you have lost somewhere or uh, manage in your folders you can do that in your mobile phone so what is basically ict ict talks about the creation of e content the managing of e content the storing of information the retrieving of information this is all about ict so ict is broadly defined the activities uh, from uh, uh, activities which you perform through any technological device like these are activities managing creating storing retrieving and sharing so this is basically ict information and communication technology so uh, this is one of the simplest example uh, for defining ict now using these ict devices or tools or softwares both hardware and software all this uh, the scenario of covid has been uh, like uh, you have yourself been in that part or that phase we have seen these devices and these part is so much beneficial so coming uh, beyond this covid period to this covid has given a uh, uh, like uh, every teacher every learner has an independence of teaching independence of learning which is not possible earlier in the face to face classroom and in my experience i have seen i have gone to the remote areas too in the urban areas too we explored we have surveyed we have gone the field work and we have find out still many teacher before covid teachers are having a that small small one phone button phone there they are not even using the smartphone so this covid has given the up uh, us the power to uh, take that devices and use just devices for the teaching learning process so uh, now the scenario has completely changed but still there are many gaps and we have we see it as a technical term digital divide is there still there are digital divide but we are overcoming to that too so i will just not take any time and share my screen for further uh, presentation just hold on hope my screen is visible and so we will talk about all these digital initiatives at national level which the government has taken indian government has taken and uh, uh, ma'am your screen is not yes ma'am your yes. screen is not visible one second ma'am Ma'am, 
Ma'am, now your screen is visible. Ma'am, you can continue. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So in today's presentation, we'll try to cover most of the things. Let's see which the time allows. I uh, expect like if uh, something is left, I will take more time. So I will not be having any foundation for the time. So uh, I will start with an activity uh, with you. I will just share a URL with you in the chat box. So just let me know if everybody will get this chat box or the coordinators. I request the coordinators to share this link. And just see what happens. There's an activity, small activity, in which the question is given. What are the experiences with ICT as a learner? I request the coordinators to share that. Yes, ma'am. I will share. Yes, yes. ma'am. I will share. Yes. Okay. And by, after clicking this link, you will see a wall. I just want you to share your experiences with ICT as a learner. So what you have experienced, it is motivating. Have you learned something new? Are you applying the ICT skills in your teaching learning if you are a teacher? Or uh, what else experience for your personal usage you are using that ICT? And what all kind of activities you perform? So after clicking this link, you will be able to see this kind of a wall. What you have to do, you have to just click on the plus icon on the right hand side here at the corner. Below corner right hand side, you have just click it and you will get a box here. So in that box, in the subject, you just write your name and write something about whatever you feel, what is our experiences. You can upload an image to, you can click your image right from your mobile phones if you are using the, uh, take, uh, joining the session. If you want to post any kind of URL or link, you can do that. So there are many kind of attachments you can um post on right now so some of the participants have joined here you can see their it's processing and the sponsors will come here why i am performing this activity because this is the interactivity of the technology which allows the teacher and the learner to interact and make a classroom more interesting so this activity has been designed on a, a online tool that is called padlet and it is a synchronous tool Whatever like Karthik and sir has written, I am happy to join the workshop. I receive, I have received his response here. So just if uh, again I am repeating, you have to just click on plus and you have to just type your experiences with ICT. So if you want to just type your name, you can. Otherwise, it can be anonymous. You, if I want to respond to the what participant has told, I can just like it here. I can just comment on some others post like you do in the on the Facebook or any social media platform. So this activity, I hope I am not getting another responses. Slowly you are typing. You can post any images too. I have used this wall earlier in another workshop. So you can see a student has posted his image and written his experiences. Kriti ma'am has written ICT is a boon in today's world, but it should be used very responsibly. True ma'am. Uh, the cyber issues are mostly appearing nowadays, so definitely we have to use it in a uh, manner that uh, every student should know about the pros and cons of using ICT. So yes, uh, I will get the responses and later show the responses. So I've got the two responses. The purpose of this activity is to just interact with, interact with you and to get the responses because this is a, like, in a, uh, technology the world we are just two-way communication is possible but in an online classroom like this one uh, i'm not able see, to see your faces so from your name and from your uh, responses i will get to know what you are thinking about ict ict is a uh, is to facilitate a teacher teacher should use it wisely yes it is an anonymous user so i'm not able to see the name no issues so moving on to the uh, other part of the presentation Okay, I will. Uh, I am just making it open. You can type it at your own speed. Fine. So, coming back to the presentation. So, you can see a simple example how this ICT ha can be interactive because most of the people, most of the teachers, I will not specify the age group of the teachers because every age group, according to the uh, ICT, is not uh, focusing on the age group. I've seen so many teachers who are like about to retire and they are so much interested in using ICT. So this uh, technology usage in a classroom 
has taken a long way after covid and there is a huge history of uh, using education technology and there is a timeline which we uh, see on your screen it started in a, as a educational technology scheme in 1972 at that time the computers had entered into the classroom and uh, uh, in the school system the computers had entered and later on the technology used is through the television medium uh, through inter, uh, our national satellite edu set you might have heard it is in 1983 and that becomes the two uh, like thing one way communication so as the might be in at your time parents time they might have seen many programs on the doordarshan educational programs which has been telecasted by central institute of education technology it's a national organization uh, it's a constituent unit of ncert which is working uh, in the area of education technology so they used to uh, telecast the programs educational programs you might have heard about the tarang name of the program and many of the activity based program the interactive program in a studio set up uh, the teachers or the uh, teachers came and just uh, show the programs interact with the students but that is a time of one way communication through educational satellites then later uh, at one scheme has originated ict at school scheme in 2004 it has been drafted but later on it has been revised in 2010 uh under this scheme what has happened uh, in the country in the government and government aided school now computers has been provided uh, I, uh, almost like present situation is that 50% of schools in our country government schools in the country has been provided with a computer lab having 10 computers and uh, this said like teaching computers or taking the classes to use use that computers still the condition is not so good in the government schools we have been a part of uh, field work and we visited in rajasthan delhi and other state seven to eight state and uh, you can see the reports even on the website cit website so we find out the computers are not in a good condition and uh, they are not used by the subject teachers more of the states are like there is a one computer teacher on a contractual basis they appoint the computer teachers and uh, they teach the basics of like ms office and internet only so there is again a gap of uh, the using of computers by the subject teachers so the ict at school scheme uh, is uh, revised in 2010 but because the new policy hasn't come out till right now we have a new policy national policy again the scheme will be revised and hopefully the new technological devices and new things will be allocated by the government sector to the government schools and with the much much usage and uh, uh, fruitful of uh, this computer now later uh, our policy especially on ict policy at national level has been formulated in 2003 and you can again find out this policy on the website under this policy it has been mentioned at the pre service level or the in service level and uh, there are the three levels defined for enhancing the competency of teachers it is basic intermediate or advanced and in this policy uh, it has been focused on uh, both teachers and student has to get ict competency because again in our country there is no specific course for ict you might have seen uh, if you want to learn computers if no no one knows computer in my days in my college day there is a small centers coming in the like in the local areas and we used to go there and uh, learn computer uh, Uh, later on then uh, a ict curriculum has been drafted along with that particular curriculum one website or the portal that is called national repository of open education resources has also been launched uh, presently naroer is not working because uh, the purpose of this national repository is that to consolidate or compile all the type of e content whether it is a textual video audio any images uh created by ncert or if anyone uh, con wants to contribute the content freely to particular particular for the national repository so they can contribute so it is an open educational resource like wikipedia is an open educational resource similar way our country has a uh, open educational resource for school education and uh, on this all the type of e content related to school education and teacher education has been uploaded but presently this all of this content has been like transferred to the uh, website your ma'am uh, abhyasha ma'am has told about diksha website 
So Diksha uh, has been a one nation one platform. Earlier, NROER is having the content developed or created by NCRT and uh, complete NCRT, and some of the other contributors have contributed. But presently, for Diksha, each and every state is contributing the content, and that is under like free of cost or just the, uh, any teacher or any contributor can contribute on Diksha website. And if we talk about ICT curriculum, ICT curriculum is drafted, uh, and its purpose is that for every if any student uh, starting from 9th, 10th, or 11th, 12th class, they want to gain the com uh, computer competency. So there's a basically course structure has been defined, starting from the basic part to the advanced level. And uh, any student or in-service teachers can do that course and get a certificate or a diploma. But this course to be implemented uh, at state level. So if you are thinking that you can uh, gain a certificate after completing the course this website, but uh, now it's not possible because the state has to implement. The state has implemented. SCRT daily has a responsibility to uh, initiate this course. And through that, if you are part of a government system like in-service teacher, you can enroll in that course and you get the certificate. So after uh, uh, later, again, MAM has told about the digital initiative in 2015. And along with that, uh, again, a, web, uh, a website and a mobile app, ePartshala, you know, all might have, have been in your phones, having the content, e-textbooks of created by NCRT on ePartshala. This is a major initiative in 2015. Later on in 2017, there are Swayam and Swayam Prabha. Uh, Swayam is for massive open online courses. Uh, and Swayam Prabha is for DTS TV channels. These oh, both are uh, launched on to, in 2017. And 2020, we all know national education policy has been launched. Uh, and uh, along with that, another initiative is PME Vidya. It has been launched. And again, the new initiatives are coming up. And uh, we are going to more towards the disruptive technologies and virtual labs and et cetera. So I will just show uh, the present scenario is that in na national education policy, there are the two dedicated sections on technology. One is technology use and integration. And another one is online and digital education. And the focus of uh, technology on this policy is on the disruptive technology like artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain, handheld computing devising, adapted, adaptive computer testing for student development. And this has to be integrated in our education system. Along with that, uh, National Education Technology Forum has been proposed. And right now, it has been made. This is a for forum, or you can say a setup or the, uh, in where the at national level, the research, the development, and the, all the activity awareness program related to education technology will be uh, organized by this forum. So you can see the website of NETF and you can find out what all activities we are performing. Now with that, the software development, like we are all using free and open source software, but we will try to develop or create softwares of our own because right now we are using the software created by the like external foreigner in the foreign country or the other countries. But we will plan to create our own software, and that will be specifically on our major Indian languages. Because you, whenever you use computers and you find out the barrier of languages, much more. And if you see nowadays, like uh, any website will be translated in Hindi. That is a on whenever the translation part comes in Hindi specifically, there are so many errors. So there should be some softwares or an automatic like software whenever we used to translate any of the thing any of the website or any web page it should be corrected so that will only happen when our own country will start creating the developing the software so teaching learning and creating the e-content which is already going on and using the disruptive technology like uh, virtual reality augmented reality another 24th part is uh, focusing on the online teaching platforms and uh, it says that every teacher of a country should be an effective online educator and for that training and incentive for teacher is also applicable if any organization is doing that that will be very nice because every teacher wants some incentive 
and one incentive which a teacher are at national level is getting right now from past many years is a national ict award uh, which is give, been given by ncert uh, to president of india uh, gave that award with a not much of monetary benefit but a, it's a huge recognition recognition in the world of uh, ict so we uh, basically this uh, advertisement or uh, this nominations is being uh, like started uh, on the website and uh, you can if you are future in future whenever you are teaching and become a teacher you can apply for that award if you are using any innovation in ict so we are teaching we teachers are getting the incentives too and uh, we have to use blended learning more models because after covid many of the researches has been focused at uh, whether technology has replaced the teacher online classes are not so good i don't know whether in present uh, session you are enjoying or not but uh, how much of the opinion is that they are on in online session a lot of things are lacking but if you are getting proper training to use ict in your classroom through online session it can be more interactivity interactive and interesting so i've just shown you in the timeline the major initiative ipatshala diksha uh, nishta swayam ict curriculum pme vidya and timeline you haven't heard about the nishta nishta is a national initiative for uh, the development of teachers it uh, covers many aspects of different subjects and under that ict is one of the subject and to reach out the teachers during the covid period for in service teacher training nishta program has been launched by ncert and uh, there is another activity let's see i will just copy the link again and uh, just ask again kartikan sir to um, yes ma'am yes. yes okay so after getting this link you will get a page uh like this and you have to what you have to do you have to enter a code in like this one code h4964456 and you have to just mention how i can ict support in your teaching learning only in two words so this again an activity has been designed to just show you again if you are uh, uh, what you are thinking how ict can use can be used as a teacher the earlier question is as a learner what do you think about ict usage now this is a part as a teacher how what are the benefits or what you can find out so are you able to join i think nana has joined yes. till now yes. you will after clicking on the link you have to enter this code 8496445456 okay two answers we have received ict and the cloud okay how i am repeating the question how can ict support your teaching and learning in two words you will get this thing and you have to enter the two words in the box and your responses will come here so this is the activity which will make you understand uh the opinion of the participant or uh, what all major participants will respond that will come highlight with a bigger size font size so right now one this person is here only and uh, again i will wait for the responses you will get this page after entering the code and you have to just type on the two words and i will re receive the response here so If someone is typing, then I've got only one participant here. I will be able to know like how many are joining or not. Okay. Another response is assessment and learning. Okay. This is a dynamic platform. This comes on, uh, like comes to change whenever the we get the response. So whenever any participant is responding here in the two words. the answer will come here and as a teacher i can see the responses so this will make a word uh, word cloud and the maximum responses will be in the bigger font size okay learning assessment and i artificial intelligence it will be a fun when more of the participant join and we get the responses 
so moving on to the next slide so i will just leave it here if you are continuing we can see later hi so uh, here again i am starting my presentation so i'll discuss till now what all initiatives has been taken and uh, one thing i will just show you side by side over if you want to see i have talked about the diksha platform so in diksha i have told you it is a collaborate it is uh, it's a tagline is one nation one platform so all the contributors whether from ncert cbsc nios or different states you can see the drop down all of the state and uts have contributed their developed e content on this and you can see the usage matrix too and their contribution state wise which country state has contributed the most you can see the color change and we see the how many content contribution has been given so if you want to see any kind of e content on related to any textbook of the state textbook or the ncert content you have to just go on explore and you will uh, see you have to apply the filter class wise and you can see which class or which content has been created so the video content audio content exercises the content related to icl videos indian sign language videos all of this content is uh, available here what i have been wait on if i am seeing i have not uh, apply the filter but accountancy textbooks or business study as a c yeah whenever you click on the particular class the particular subject you can see the different type of contents coming up here it starts with the text contextual content and if you just see here the chapters are given and if you want want to find out any of the content here you just click on the chapter these icon are related to the textbook part e textbook explanation content this tv icon means the content video content is here the practice items are there if any audio content is there then a microphone is coming up like mic is coming so this is the different icon through which you can explore the content so this content again is uh, being telecasted on pme vidya channel too and the major part uh, the nice part of this website is that the uh, the license which on this website is uh, the cc license cc by license what does this license mean i will cover up in the detail in the next section i just briefly tell you cc license provides you the freedom to download the content freely and use the content freely as a teacher if you want to use this video in your classroom you can do that so diksha provides you the flexibility because the it has taken the license of cc and you can use the content freely so this is very important if you are searching any content on the youtube randomly or the google every content is not free it is like cop under copyright license then you will be sued for by the owner of the content so what you need to do you have to identify the type of license whenever you are searching any content on the internet Right. So Diksha is here platform. So I am. I hope I, you all have seen. You can find out the courses for your interest area on So I am platform. And, uh, and under school education and teacher education, the content I will say is in under school education, NCERT used to create the content for 11th and 12th classes. And uh, uh, under that content is related to the textbooks of. Uh, okay. just hold on just hold on
Hello. He, uh, yes, sorry. Sir. Yes, sorry, sir. Uh, just no, 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 sir. Uh, yes. So, uh, can can you wait for a second, sir? I have to just share. Yes, and talk surely, 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 surely. Yes, sir. So uh, I'm showing you Swayam platform and I'm telling you if as a school teacher uh, after uh, like after completing your BA or MA, you might have like miss uh, forgot about the content what you have learned from like BSc or BA. So what you can do, you can enroll in an NCRT course and you can brush up your information about the like, 11th and 12th classes what you have learned at that classes. So NCRT provides the courses for 11th and 12th classes in different subjects. The, the, all the subjects of 11 and 12 but uh, one of the drawback is that the school education the school moves if we say as in our country the system is so rigid that the school doesn't allow you to get, uh, do any online co allow in the sense in, in our formal system every student has to attend the school and uh, attend the classes and they get the examination done and then get the certificate and the for the courses so for ex uh, extra learning or uh, extra information because uh, this certificate is not valid for them, the school students especially. So this is a gap till now, but hopefully in future, when the system turns about like the online education during COVID we have seen, then possibly the certification value will enhance. Now in present times, uh, the SOM courses of school education or school MOOC is mostly done by civil aspirants, which prepare the content for 11, 12 classes to so just brush up their knowledge. and. Uh, for teacher education on the SWAM platform, there are some many courses which ignore and uh, under NCRT even RI has also developed a course on the pedagogy. So pedagogy on IC, even the science courses, there are two courses. So you can join that course. There's a one course of education administration. That course can be done. So these present courses will enhance your information and knowledge too. And besides this MOOCs, you can just join the Commonwealth of Learning MOOCs, which are freely available and they provide you the certificate free of cost. So that Commonwealth of Learning courses are much more beneficial. They are related to many areas. So you can just search on Commonwealth of Learning and they are associated with many international universities and uh, you can learn a lot of things. And besides this Swayam, Swayam is the DTA channel uh, for PM with I will say. Uh, Swayam Prabha has been launched in 2017, uh, where there are the two sections, the higher education and school education. There are the 32 TTA TV channel launched. Later on, 34, uh, it has been increased to 34. And the present scenario is that for specifically school education, because we find out a digital divide and all the students of school education or the teachers cannot go, have not accessed, uh, cannot access the uh, videos or the content through Diksha platform because the internet issues, because of internet issues. So what we have done, we tried to make our content, make the content accessible to all or dissemination through television and radio too. And under this PME Vidya channel, uh, which was earlier a single channel is running, uh, that is for classes 9 to 12, but later on one class, one channel has been launched. This happened in uh, before the policy as in May 2020 and I was a part of this PM Vidya channel. So what we do, we have compiled all the already created e-content or the video content of NCRT and different RIs. We have collaborated with the NGOs too. They have contributed, UNESCO has contributed and an individual, uh, Arvind Gupta, if you have heard the name, 
he has also contributed lot many contributors are there and we have created a different uh, uh, class wise channels and we allocate that different uh, videos uh, under different chapters we done the mapping and on the basis of a fixed timetable timetable has also been designed with a objective like if us i am as a student and i am sitting at home and i want to read the subject all the subjects in a single day so all the subjects four major subjects will be uh, telecasted in a special slot so two hour slot one half of an hour slot uh, for 30 minutes i will see math then hindi then english then social science essay like this way the time table has been designed for every class and every student can sit in a single go at 2 hours or the 3 hours and they can see the topics and the chapters and both in hindi and english medium the content has been disseminated the the latest development after the success of pme vidya from 2020 to 22 in 22 the ministry has taken a decision to launch 200 channels so what is the objective of 200 channel it sounds to be a huge channel and soon in the next month hopefully 200 channels will be launched now again uh, the barrier is coming we are telecasting the content for hindi and english medium but what about the regional languages and we all know the pol policy is focusing on the regional language and three language formula so the content uh, the uh, channels is being allocated to the different states and uts and they are making the content in their own language or they are uh, translating the content of ncert in their languages the different ways like sit kerala state institute uh, state institute of education technology in kerala is already creating and uh, the content in their regional language of trust many years so what they are doing they are just they will just compile the content and telecast through the pm vidya channel so now this pm vidya channel is 12 and this will be an increase to 200 channels which will be allocated to the states and uts of the country and now the education or the video content will be telecasted so if the student have not access uh, to internet they can see the content in the tv and this has gained us so much popularity because we are having a feedback mechanism and uh, through calls during covid period like uh, ncert is not uh, taking a rest during covid period the uh, tele callers are sitting and attending the calls and the students from every part of the nation is calling and giving the feedback what they want how they like the channel what their expectation and through that feedback analysis or research kind of has been done and on the basis of that only this decision has been taken so this is a mass decision like thinking of for every child and teacher of the nation pm vidya uh, channels have been launched i have just talked about the icit curricula so icit curricula uh, if you want don't want to enroll your you can see the content any time like you can see the syllabus you can see the course repository there is a unlimited resources available so i'm just clicking and showing you starting from the basic if you don't know even the ms office part you can just click on the content and you can see how you can create the content your simple things like simple activities how you can edit a document how you can access the media resources you can just see the content and resources a small videos or the textual content and you can uh do uh, learn lot of things through ict curricula so there are the courses for student and courses for teachers available so this is a open repository created on moodle platform this and elements fine and if you want to uh, again e parshala e parshala you know all the textbook content is uh, uploaded here and now presently the textbooks are energized energized textbook means all the textbooks of ncert uh ncert ke all many states have taken up this ini initiative and they are uh, uh, they are donated the qr code place the qr code on their textbook so whenever you scan the textbook qr code uh, the, the digital textbooks will be available so it started with ncert it started with tamil nadu state has done the first then later on ncert has done do like many uh, states have uh, now energized textbook and uh, along with that uh, one thing e parshala has also created some of the more mobile apps uh, which are like very beneficial see the parshala ar app that will provide you the augmented reality content 
so every any time if you are exploring on the google play store and don't write ncrt app because that that many apps are not created by ncrt ncrt has created the app on the branding of e parshala so you will every day write e parshala different uh, e parshala apps will come out that are created by ncrt and if you want to learn more about what kind of activities is uh, in the area of educational technology you have to just follow the cit website and here you will get to know about uh, e content guideline has been created this document is very beneficial when you start with the, as a teacher you start to create any e content okay and uh, if you want to find out any like courses or events i talked about ict award you can see the ict award in future for future to if you want to join some webinar for workshop or training programs any time you can join the workshop and training programs come uh, goes on on live youtube like this program is going on on the live youtube so every evening 4 to 5 pm you can a short term training programs one one week training programs are going you have to just uh, follow ncrt social media account facebook or twitter and uh, instagram and you will get a registration link over there and you just register on through a google form and you will able to join the small workshop and training programs like in the present week the uh, training program on the disruptive technologies going on so you can join you have to just see we one hour video and you will just uh, have to at last you have to uh, apply for the quiz like uh, then you will get the certificate digital certificates are available so many on uh, uh, like ma'am uh, has told about the cyber security and issues uh, nowadays to be safe so there are some uh, what you say then uh, cyber safety and security guidelines and the small brochures has been developed again you can read that and you can exp and you, even you can circulate in your among your students too so you can get the resources over here how to get secure in both in different languages so just exploring this website you will get to know more about education technology at a national level what we are what all our country is doing fine so these are some major initiatives now coming back to the presentation what all we can do uh, now it's a time out like some workshop or the activity part i don't know whether you have the laptop right now if you want to explore side by side some different tools you can do that too so what all technological integration in your education you have done till now after listening to this uh, cell presentation we have used online blended and flipped learning online you all know blended the blend of online and offline flipped learning is a kind of uh, technique in which a teacher uh, provides any activity digital activity earlier to the classroom like if your teacher has given you a video to see to whatsapp before the class and whenever you coming in the classroom and teacher starts your lesson with the feedback what you have seen what you find out what are your observations so that is called a flipped classroom right learning management system most of the learning management system uh, used are google classroom and the microsoft teams and uh, moodle is one of the lms famous lms so during covid this lms has been used moocs you uh, might have you have done but if you haven't done any moocs till now do enroll in moocs because this will add in your cv and it will make an impact for your professional life then webinar training programs workshops assignment submission you have all have done emails and different tests through google forms mostly through google forms or online quizzes you have been done doing and creating the e content uh, e content type of presentation ppt video tutorial screen cast on the scan copy of notes this has been done during the covid time and every teacher and student now have learned these all technical terms but as a future teachers what you have to do if you are starting creating your e content and you want to integrate the technology in your lesson plan so there is not something as a like this has been not been defined somewhere i make it my own so for that you first of all you have to need to do a planning part if you for planning as a teacher you might have some conceptual knowledge how to integrate technology in your teaching learning and for that the most famous uh, framework or uh, the model it's given by mishra uh, that is a tpac model so in this model it is expected that every teacher has got the content knowledge and 
while doing b ed or the in sub pre service level you all know about the pedagogy how to teach that particular subject so you all know about pedagogical knowledge now what we have to do we have to integrate technology into our content and pedagogical knowledge so your uh, ict integration will be done through this framework when you integrate all these components that will be a tpack thing like technological pedagogical content knowledge and this should uh, this can be done through a proper planning and that planning stay starts with a instructional design and one instructional design again famous instructional design is edi model edi is a uh, abbreviation for like analysis design development implementation and evaluation you start if you are making your e content so what you have to done do so first of all you have to think of the target audience who will be the analyze the situation the present situation first of all your class take a class you have to develop the content for class 5th or 10th or 12th according to the target audience you have to see what topic we have to teach what is the nature of that particular subject that analysis has to pre analysis analysis has to be done then on the basis of that analysis you will just take the content and design develop a storyline or a storyboard of particular topic or a content and start developing the content and after developing and creating that content you have to do a uh, implementation part and implementation it can be done through teaching that teaching can be online form if you are developing any video or audio program you will take that audio or video among your students whether in offline classroom or an online classroom and you will evaluate that particular content which you have created so edi model provides you a base of how to start to develop e content starting with the analysis and ending with the evaluation and through feedback you can again change the uh, Uh, if any flaw are there, you can change the uh, or modify your e content. Right. So this is the basic step or the process of developing the e content. Later, uh, in the planning part, we are under planning phase only. First of all, I have told you about the conceptual thing, the TPAC model and an EDI model. Then uh, the for planning you have to focus on the nature of content if you are teaching the subject of english in english subject you have to uh, see the pronunciation or the language or the written part for that audio content is much beneficial if you are taking any history content then history the timeline in history part you can cannot show any process going on for science you have to show the some process or the scientific experiment so you have to see what kind of a nature of content is uh, you have to teach on the basis of nature of content you have to identify the objectives or the learning outcome and on the basis of that you have to identify your digital pedagogy what method of teaching or the activities or strategy you will follow now under that planning you have to also see if you are uh, creating your e content of your own that is very good to software or the mobile apps but if you are not able to start with uh, you are hesitant to create your own content you have to pull the resources from internet and when I, whenever you are searching from internet you have to identify the open educational resources so i have told you uh, one open education resource platform nroer that is not presently working but diksha is one major open education resource uh, from that you can find out the content as per the need Uh, the nature of your subject or the topic or the titles of the subject now what is oer oer is a teaching learning material which are present in the public domain uh, public domain and which are not under any copyright issues some kind of openness are uh, provided in the open education resources and what kind of openness yahan pe openness we are we are talking about the closeness open or closed not all the content are not completely free so you have to see which what kind of oer is present and uh, whether you can uh, download that content whether you can reuse that content that is five five activity if the person who is the owner of that content has given you the authority to revise that content or remix that content or redistribute your content this is the criteria for the openness of the content 
and on the basis of these five are only six type of creative common license has been identified double c indicates creative common this by indicate a uh, uh, icon having then human image by indicate means it means that whenever you are using creative common any of the creative common license you have to acknowledge the owner or author of the content if i have made the content you are using my content then you have to mention in your references at last that uh, this content has been created by dipti gupta so that means you have acknowledged that content so every license has this human icon you can see under six times so every time whenever you are using any internet your resource under creative common license you have to acknowledge that acknowledgement means at in the end of the presentation or you have seen in my presentation i have given the sources of the website so i have acknowledged that content or acknowledged that particular website from which i have taken my content another type of icon is this share alike uh, a reverse arrow that means this sa means share alike share alike means whenever like uh, i am i have taken the content having this license cc by so if i am using the content cc by then i have to if i am further sharing that content to my students or the colleagues as to share with the same license so share alike is mean sharing the content with the same license uh, present in that particular content then this icon having a dollar sign that means non commercial nc means non commercial i cannot uh, use the particular content which i am using under this license to make money like if uh, like any any textbook is uh, showing this license so i can download it read it freely and i can share it okay but i cannot sell that particular book to get the money so non commercial means the non commercialization of that particular content then this license is more restricted this if this license is appearing then it is it has to be acknowledged you cannot sell it but you have to share it with the same license another new icon coming is equal to sign here non derivative so you cannot make derivatives or the copies of that particular content nd means that non derivative so these are six type of licenses and uh, i have just skip the presentation and show you once here the openness of content uh, the different content in the terms of license appears here the most open license is the the cc by 0 that means the public domain no uh, if you see any this type of icon then you can use this content even you can sell this type of sell the content there is no restriction on using any type of activity of for this content then you can see the most restricted license is this one copyright is the definitely the highest reserved one because copyrighted cannot content cannot be used like you cannot make a copy if i uh, provide this c on my presentation you cannot use this presentation anywhere you can cannot even download the presentation and use it so the most restricted license under cc is cc by nc by nd you cannot sell the content you cannot make the copy of that content so this is the most restrictive license so this is a, again a uh, drop to down uh, uh, follow ki like what kind of uh, strictness or the openness has been provided to the different type of licenses so coming back here whenever you are using any content from internet just see anywhere downwhere any of any uh, on the web page anywhere this license has been mentioned you have seen on the uh, textual documents nowadays like many of the unesco reports are again cc by license any like world bank documents are cc having cc license many of the journal papers are having cc license so you can download the content and you reuse it even you can if depending on the type of license you can make a copy remix the content like ncert on diksha platform i have shown you this type of license is given that means this license has freedom you can if i like the piece of audio from a popular audio program from diksha and i have recorded my audio in my mobile phone and i will just use the background music piece from that audio file and remix it with my audio i can do that 
So Diksha has provided you the flexibility to reuse, remix, and reshare the content. So depending on the type of essence, you can use the content and you should do that. Just giving an example here, I don't know how many of you have done this earlier. If I am uh, simply exploring, I mean like I am opening up the Google and search engine. Okay, fine, I am searching an image. Um, just I've shown this demo a lot of times. Whenever you search an image, find uh, how many of apply of the filter here. You have to go to tools. You have to uh, see the usage right, and you will just select Creative Commons license. So these are the CC images mostly, and Pixabay is a famous website. Yeah, Wikimedia Commons. These are some famous websites which allow you to. Uh, just uh, use these images and you have to just open the image and see which kind of a CC license is given under this image and you can use that and always acknowledge the particular website on the image. Uh, we randomly use uh, Google and just search out any relevant image and just paste it on our presentation. That is not right because this uh, uh, attitude towards using the other's content freely and most like optically, I mean, the the attitude we Indians are having, especially, will say this is not good because uh, if we are, this is a kind of uh, theft we are doing. So if we are doing as a teacher, we are doing the theft. As a student, we are doing. Then if our students are making the presentation and projects, taking out the images, print out and all, and they submit the projects, so we are saying, you have copy it. So what kind of ethics we are giving like to our students? So the wise use uh, the person has written in the the wise usage hame aise hi karna hai. We have to see what kind of a license is available. And agar, uh, if the content uh, flexibility of the license is like uh, any uh, the flexibility which they are providing, then we have to use it accordingly. So the, and even on the YouTube, you can apply this filter. So if I'm searching out any video on YouTube, you can go here under the filter section and you can see the Creative Commons license here. So you just click on that and just see. But just once check uh, in detail whether uh, before using which kind of CC license is that. Fine. So this is uh, one of the important parts and you can see so many open education resources. Uh, Diksha, these are OLATs and uh, these are like famous open education resources worldwide too, which are mostly used. OER Commons, Creative Commons and all. This is a major hub they have created for Creative. Creative Commons has themselves created a search engine, CC search. So you can use directly the Creative Commons license images, videos, text material through website. And OLAP is uh, one of the uh, resource center for like uh, sciences and languages, which has been created by Amrita University. This provides you the simulation activities. Okay, open up OLAP. Here. Open Lab has, uh, you can find out the simulation activity and what are simulation? Simulation are kind of e-content which provides you the interactivity, supports, I am randomly opening, uh, starting with here the class is given. So, um, I have to just open randomly because I am right now I am not knowing how it will work. You can see theory, procedure, animation and a simulator. So, I am just trying randomly. So, you can interact with the content here. Suppose it is getting down and the color change is open. Uh, like we can see the color change. I don't know about the concept right now, but I am telling, giving you the example. This is an interactive content simulation, simulated interactive content through which the science experiments, which is uh, not possible uh, in earlier uh, through computer technology, but uh, good simulators has been created by OLAS. And uh, one of the worldwide simulators are PET has been developed by Colorado University. Again, in this also, very nice simulators are present and this is for higher education. So you have to just explore and see. So just apply the filter and see what type of active you can find out here. So in a similar way, there's a lot of simulators are here present. 
so you can uh, provide the links to your student and ask your students to learn so science experiment the gap of uh, face to face science experiment can be covered by using this kind of simulators and uh, another one i've shown you this one so before using any oer just check the type of license then uh, search through cc search engine then always give the credit in the form of references and apply filters in google images and youtube videos in that case no plagiarism uh, will uh, take place and you will be safe because any time on any because whenever you create any content you will definitely publish it on your website share through whatsapp and if any person any owner if you have not acknowledged they can call back or call and communicate back to you that you have uh, taken his or her content that will be a uh, very shame for you so just use open educational source by applying the creative common license just taking the creative common license till now any question sir so, uh, no ma'am no so we have a question is... section we have question okay. section separately the, huh, the time, time is running so how much time it has been like 5:15 ma'am you can take it <laughs> no like 5:30 we have Okay, I will just show you first now. Now we come oh, yes. to step. Uh, we have done the planning part. We have uh, tried to do the content pooling part from the internet sources. Now, if as a teacher I want to create the content myself, then uh, I have can. There are different ways. And starting from the different type of content, uh, I can use the subject specific software, infographic, mind maps, stop motion animation videos, traditional audio videos, and interactive. and there is a uh, fast tool uh, like uh, a mind map has been given in the that has been taken from ncert e content guideline here i have given the reference i have shown you on the website too so there the fast tool are the free and open source softwares and for different subject if you say if you want to create the graphic you want to make a geography content you have to create the math content you have to contain the english content different subjects and different type of e content the different names of softwares has been given so you can follow that and some of the examples which i have taken like for chemistry for creating the molecular structure jmol or avogadro is a software for social sciences you can use the marble terrarium geo for math geo algebra so these are different subject specific softwares these are free softwares which you can download on your system having any operating system whether it is windows ubuntu or mac and you can create the content e content freely and the features is that they can be downloaded in any operating system and you can create the content save it and download and edit it you can take the cc license of your created content and you can ask your students even to create the e content using these softwares another uh, type of e content which you can create is concept in a mind map and uh, one of the Uh, example uh, these are free like google drawing is for associated with the google apps then above these tools are free and open source below are the online tools and these are the limitation that you can create only 3 to 5 mind map so better to use the uh, above one they are free and open source software and i have just opened a free free software so just a small demo whenever you download the pen open it you can see a central branch central node here it is called as node and you can if you click it double click it and just type it anything here suppose i am typing here so what is the use of concept map on mind map it is a visual resource uh, through this the ideas can be collaborated if you are using it in your classroom then uh, uh, You can take the ideas of the student, like what you know, uh, ICT, or uh, give anything what you can understand about the term ICT. So one of the students said, "Ma'am, uh, ICT is computers." So you just click on enter, and a new branch will come here. I can move this branch here, I say this way, and I can just type computer. So similar way, you can take the ideas. Like in a normal classroom, you offline classroom, you go in the classroom, and it has been taught to you that uh, previous knowledge testing karni hai so aap class mein jaake what you say ki okay aap directly you don't say na aaj hum ye padhne wale no you ask the questions first of all 
So in a similar way, you get the responses, you note down the responses on a website or sorry, blackboard. In a similar way, this tool can help you to get the responses. It can start as a discussion and even in the recapitulation part or in the end of the lesson, you can use this tool and you get the responses and a collaborative effort, a concept can be defined. Like what are con concept, major sub concept, ye ek idea pura generate hoker. In this form, you can get a visual uh, source or you can later save it in a PDF form. And in, in present times, so websites, even textbooks, sub may concept map has been published in a pictorial manner, like image form you have seen. So this is a, one of the easiest, uh, good way to uh, uh, get the ideas, collaborate the idea, brainstorming. So, some ideas here, just have explained. Another is to create that infographic for some generic software, so which is, can be used for creating the image sources, interactive sources, infographic, 2D animations, ke liye scratch. Hai. So, I will again show you one infographic one. So, infographic is uh, a source which is uh, having the information and a graphic things like small small objects or images now if you are not uh, good at drawing part so what you say you identify the children in your classroom having a good drawing drawing so you ask him or her please draw a chart paper but this online tool provides you the templates free templates like canva you have might have used canva kaafi famous hai. So there are many online free tools available having different limitations through which you can get the ready-made template and what you can do, you can create of your own. Jo bhi concept ya idea hai, uh, you can uh, identify the small, small objects or the images from that particular tool. You can click your own images, upload your own images here or you can uh, make a complete, a digital chart you can say. So, because it is online, hai, so it will take time to load. Uh, I've just shown you here examples. It is editable. You just select the template and any part you can click in and that is editable. Small, small images are here. You can identify, you can upload your own images too. And you can edit the text here. You can uh, make the charts here, bar graphs or pie graphs you can make here. You can even add the YouTube URL or airs here. So while demonstrating this tool online, the video will also be played on this infographic. So this infographic tool you can use and there are many mobile applications and for example I have given you augmented reality. I will just show you one photo here. Just see the photo. This dinosaur is standing beside me. So this has been done through email like augmented reality and virtual reality are two terms. Uh, one is augmented reality means the the, the whatever I like the digital world comes into my world and virtual reality means I will go into the digital world. The difference between the basic difference is that. So this is the animated or digital world which is coming in into my world. I am standing in a room. So augmented reality content through AR app what you can do. Uh, you can uh, just you just have to take a ninth or tenth class NCRT textbook. Just uh, it will be the filter is coming. You have to apply what kind of image or the textbook image you have to scan from mobile. You scan it and you will get the uh, animal cell, plant cell, any motion. Many of the like almost 80 to 90 activities has been converted in the augmented reality form. So in partial AR app you can use to see the augmented reality content. This dinosaur has been uh, created by Augment app actually. So Augment app can also be used for finding out just small small animals or for kindergarten you can say you can show them and they can have a fun. And you can create uh, uh, like your, you can use some mobile app my molecular from chemistry or sky view time spirit. This can be used for the science part. It is a app through which uh, you can uh, just having a fun uh, playing a game you can learn the subject. So stop motion studio app can be used for uh, creating a st small stop motion videos. So these are the part of uh, creating the e-content I've shown you like uh, uh, mobile apps and through some for softwares. 
another thing is that collaborative tools are also present like uh, you all might have used google doc google has provided you the apps i will just show you in the single app in a google on your gmail id you find out this and you will find google doc sheets slides jamboard padlet google forms all these are collaborative tools another is that i have just shown you the activity here so what is this this is also a collaborative app padlet in that in this account in this uh, you can create the five padlets p account fine so there are uh, many of the assessment tools which uh, is uh, which can be even collaborated mentimeter i have shown you this the mentimeter tool i have seen the message response is nice nine response got so uh, use the collaborative tools to associate with your colleagues and student and provide them the activities it is your innovation and your creativity how you use that particular tool and you use many tools but as a teacher you have to identify which tool has to be used at which step of your presentation so i have used only the two two online the links and in the starting but in between when the class is getting boring you can just create a activity and just post the link and they can do the activity the simple traditional audio video edit audio video to create audio video tools or editing tools are there software that is audacity and open shot video editor these are free and open source software and i've just skip some of the slides and show you the assessment part because at last after creating the assessment you have to uh, after creating the e content you have to assess your students so these are some uh, google form is the most used i think you have conducted lot many surveys from this and everybody in the world using google form nowadays but to create small small assessment activities you can use quizzes gym kit mentimeter smos kahoot these are all assessment tools and not only the objective type assessment Like I have used the assessment technique of this, getting a world crowd. Okay, in a similar way, uh, uh, you can use, uh, you can post the video and ask the question basis to that. Uh, different type of assessment techniques are provided. Uh, one good assessment technique I will show you is a flip. Mm. Earlier it was flip grid. This platform provides you uh, the if the student don't want to like write or something they can post their own video what is their opinion so suppose if i have asked this question is ict use is time consuming so i have provided a discussion platform and student will just click it and see in that student can post a topic post a video with their feedback so to get a video feedback this one way discussion for like this discussion forum is very interactive that is a flip uh, tool and in that uh, student can uh, for a few second video can be posted on this flip platform it's a kind of discussion forum so this is a good tool and at last whatever you are creating you have to communicate and publish and share because if you as a student or a teacher expects that every content has that you can use anybody's content from internet then you have a responsibility to create your e content and share it among uh, the colleagues and uh, across the world if you are creating some good e content you are from your clicked own images on uh, recorded videos like there are lot many things to explore if you are living somewhere in your hometown like anywhere in any place bihar up tamil nadu anywhere you just go for the field visit record your own video you you, you record nowadays but you don't post it anywhere besides with facebook use that source as an educational video and if you are recording your own video going near the sea and you just make that video post on your platform and ask the related questions to that ki what kind of a place do you think as what are the benefits of living near the sea any any questions because teacher has a capability lot teachers are lot of because we teachers has to be creative we want our students to be creative but we teachers has to be creative first so think of creating new type of e content with your own resources and uh, do the same like uh, ask the uh, uh, what you say 
the question inclusive question make students curious about uh, the things which you post to them so don't give them like a paper to read and just read it and tell what have you learned no any kind of e content just audio or a video or any images and start a discussion on the platform so this is a very good type of learning and we have to be a part of this type of a learning then our, we will say our national policy with the vision of national national policy will be achieved we have to don't focus on the road memorization we always uh, blame the system like kuch nahi ho raha hai sab aise hi padh ke de rahe hain examination focus hai hamara country no but agar aap khud acche teacher banenge to wo examination focus hat ke bahut alag tarike se learning hogi aur wahi se creativity nikal ke aayegi students ki and that will be more helpful in uh, for spending a life or hum kehte hain itni sab cheeze unko karna hai bachcho ko that is a major achievement so that's it and uh, thank you now can we can have some questions yes yes ma'am thank you thank you thank you ma'am now like my question is that uh, you have shared a lot of tools that a teacher can use to improve the teaching uh, process but can you also suggest some uh, short term online courses that a teacher uh, can use to develop uh, for their development uh first of all told you uh, you can explore the content on the ict curriculum part that is not a course you will not get the certificate but how to gain the short term courses for ict i have uh, given you an example of commonwealth of learning they have provided the three courses related to technology you can enroll in that and uh, you have to just check whether when the time enrollment starts and it is free of cost thank you I having, I'm having a question on that. Mm -hmm. uh, in the starting of the session, you told about there is an award related to ICT. Like, what is the procedure? What is the, how we can able to know about that? Okay, on, uh, you have to uh, see the CIT website. I have shown you the Central Institute of Education Technology website. Earlier, it was for the only for the school teachers, but from the last session, they have. started for the teacher educators too so the process is that you have to make a your profile and you have to uh, submit the proposal in which you have to show what kind of ict related activities or innovations you have done so just an example we have received a profile complete uh, photo with a uh, hard copy and the soft copies of the profile then after a uh, first round of selection then jury comes and you have to give a presentation among the jury can be on during covid online it has happened then jury will select the award so you have to just send a form and all the details are available on cit website the thing is what are the things we have done in the college or in our teaching learning process we need to upload it on that ha ha you have to make your own profile yes profile is whatever work you have done you have to just yes. compile it to your organization you can send it and uh, send the nomination Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for the students? Okay. Uh, there is one question from my side. Deepthi, ma'am, can you please throw some more light on Wiki Educator? Because it, that sounds very interesting to me, but I have uh, less knowledge about that. So, if you can. Okay. Uh, like wiki wiki educator provides you a platform for creating your own profile or your own work so that you just go to wiki educator just sign up with your email id and there is a blank page or a blank canvas you will get so there are some commands given a shortcut <laughs> given which you have you can see any tutorial and you can just a text box will be coming up like if you want to make any kind of word in a bold so you have to put it into the brackets like we do on the whatsapp now we put it into the commas so in the similar way we can text uh, type the text if you want to uh, upload any image or the video you can do that so wiki educator provides you your own web page you can showcase your organizational uh, 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 profile on that too and your personal too even if you want to do that and uh, even the free thing is google sites are also available if you want to create the website of your own or own web page so you can go for the google site that is also within the gmail id na you will get the nine dots you just open that and see google site 
with your own Gmail ID, you can create the Google site. That is another option. Thank you, Deepthi. Thank you so much. There are more, lot more. Uh, hopefully, like students will practice something and have a shared presentation. They will just explore the tools and start working Sorry. on. Sorry, they will do. Uh, yes, you have indeed uh, told us uh, about a lot of uh, digital things that as much as uh, we are uh, students will explore more of the things. Uh, it's an ocean. What I could have sensed from your uh, lecture today it is this, this digital initiative is not just that. It is an ocean. And there are ample opportunities to do a lot of new things. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am, for sharing your profound knowledge with us. Technology will not replace teachers, but teachers who use technology will replace those who do not. With this, I would like to call Mr. Karthikian P, Assistant Professor AIE, for vote of thanks. A respected madam, Dr. Abhilasha Godam, Principal of Army Institute of Education, esteemed keynote speaker, Dr. Dipti Gupta, Assistant Professor, Inter University Center for Teacher Education, BHU Varanasi, faculty members and dear participants. I stand here today to fill with immense gratitude to deliver the vote of thanks on behalf of RB Institute of Education. We have gathered here to celebrate a significant milestone on Indian presidency of G20 and to participate in the workshop on digital initiatives in education. First and foremost, I would like to express my artful appreciation to Dr. Abhilasha Gaudam, Principal AAE, to drive driving force behind this workshop. Your vision and leadership have made this even possible, and we are grateful for your unvarying commitment to the advancement of education, man. We extend our sincere thanks to our today's keynote speaker, Dr. Deepthi Gupta, ma'am, for gracing us with your valuable insight as a keynote speaker. Your experience and the knowledge in the field of digital initiative in education have provided us with deeper understanding of the subject. Lastly, but certainly not the least, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to all the faculty members of AAE and the participants who joined us today. Your enthusiastic and active participants have made this workshop a vibrant and interactive learning experience. A special thanks to Mr. Manoj Kumar, sir, for the technical support. Once again, I thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for providing the opportunity. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay, with this, I would like to end this session. Thank you, everyone, for your cooperation. Thank you. Thank you, Latesh. Well anchored, Bache. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> okay.